Give it up for Danny, first time ever playing electronic drums. Give it up for Eric for no reason at all, other than we love Eric. Give it up for me because I'm not preaching tonight. Would you please stand up? You'll sing better if you stand up. This song is called Take My Life and Don't Sing Unless You Mean It.
just bugging me saying, man, are you going to get some more t-shirts? I want a t-shirt. I have some more t-shirts. Okay? So, you can catch us afterwards. Just don't take no lies. See people wearing their own? Okay. Second of all, um, I'm kind of in a, um, what's the word I want to use? Ad-lib mode as far as we were going on Monday night. So the schedule that's on the website, um, and the schedule is on a piece of papers we passed out at the beginning of summer, which might not be right. Tonight's one of those nights. We are going over to Anderson's on Boulevard tonight. Next week, and I just quiver with excitement as I say this, the j &L Barbecue Food Truck is coming here. Mm -hmm. Nice. He's going to have cool pork, smoked corned beef, and brisket sandwich. And he's going to have the bunch of side potato explosion. I don't know. No more. Cool pork, smoked corned beef, and brisket sandwich, and potato explosion. Um, I went over there today to confirm all this, and I got a free sample of the potato explosion. Potatoes, cheese, bacon, and I don't know what else was in there. Mm. Uh, so that's what they have, of course, that pop. Um, now for you know, if you're going to get everything, you've got nothing to do with 10 bucks. It, it might actually be less than that, depending on, since you buy it, fresh, depending on what cost is it. Okay? Uh, are there any more announcements in there I forgot to do? I want to make sure I get them all. Wednesday night is Vipers at the Bakery. Uh, that's starting back up. See you out of Wilson's. Or if you want to ride out, we'll here at 6 30. Also, our third annual night ride is this Friday. Kick stands up from the Walmart and MT at 7 p.m. sharp. Okay? Uh, we're going to leave from there. We're going to go on a sort of two of ride around, and we're going to end up over Mike Subs in Kenmore when we're up. I don't know what time that will be. This is something very important you need to know. If it's pouring down rain, we don't go. However, you need to pay attention to this. If it's a zero degrees and dry, we go. Cold does not stop me. Rain does. Snow does. Okay? So, as long as it's dry, I don't care how cold it is, um, we're going to go. And that's from the NT Walmart, 70 inch chart. We, we left last year, I don't remember what time, but we had somebody show up at whatever 02, 802. We left at 8, somebody came at 802, wanted to know where we were. Something you folks need to know about me. If I say 7 o'clock, I mean 7 o'clock. I say 6.30, I mean 6.30. Wednesday night, we leave here at 6.30. We don't leave at 6.31. Okay? All right. Somebody see you know after 10 You know after 10 All right. So that's that. All right. Uh, last Thursday night, uh, a bunch of churches in the area um, held a healing service. And our church was part of it. And we all met down at New Covenant Tabernacle. And the folks there did a song that I had never heard before called Break Every Chain, and I liked it so much that I wanted to do it here. And so that's what this song is, and I want you to feel free to sing along if you want. If you don't want to sing, at least listen to that. This, this, there's a lot of truth in this song, all right? It's called Break Every Chain and by Jesus Culture.
us free. We don't have to be a slave to anyone or anything. Through the blood of Christ, we are set free. And I thank you for it, praise you for it, give you the glory, the credit, that doesn't come from anywhere else. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Jesus keeps us clean in 2013. And forever. All right, and here's your preacher tonight. Nicholas. Thanks. Hello, hello. Did you get the towels for those that were called the Jane up Oh, that's right. The towels. Yes, you yeah. did. Everyone raise your hand. Jane, no barbecue next week. I need to let Joe know. You're going to stay here and eat Jane no barbecue. Jane, no barbecue. Jane, no barbecue. Jane, no God's a spirit, isn't he? You can't even see the guy, and yet you draw strength from him. And he's not necessarily a guy. He's not a man. God the spirit, God the father, even though we use that language, he is a spirit nonetheless. So how do you draw strength from a spirit? How do you draw strength from something you don't see, that the world looks at you and says, well, I can hug my relatives, but I've never been hugged by God. Every time I've been hurt, I've sat there and I've literally called out to God. And I didn't hear him. He didn't hug me or anything like that. So the world kind of sees something like this where it says, my strength is you, Lord. When we say that about God, they will look at that and kind of look at it as foolish. And I understand that. I do. But I also understand the other side of the story. I understand what it actually is like to have God be my strength. To have what the Bible calls a peace, that, a peace that passes all understanding in your heart and in your mind. A couple years ago, when uh, the October storm happened, I was on my way back from seminary, going back to the Buffalo area from Rochester. And uh, my mom and dad called me up to like, find someone in Rochester to... Um, you know, stay at their house. There's supposed to be a horrible storm coming in. I'm like, I've driven through so much snow, it's ridiculous. Trust me, I'll be fine. I'm a, Buff I'm a stubborn Buffalonian. So, yeah, I drive from Rochester to the Buffalo area here, and I'm right outside the Clarence uh, station, the rest station. Uh, <laughs> I get stuck, and I end up being there all night in the bitter cold. Luckily, I had a full tank of gas, but still, it was cold. But that entire night, I had a warm heart. I knew that even though I was stubborn and even though I was stupid, I was well taken care of. Now, there's been many instances like that in my life. And there are a lot of things that happen to us in life that we feel is out of our control. And I'll tell you, any storm that I've ever 
heard happen in this world has been out of the control of human beings. We can't control the rain, we can't control the thunder, we can't control the ice. There are some things that are just larger than life, so to speak, and it's stuff that we have no control over, and sometimes it includes a whole bunch of other people that might hurt us, okay? And it's something we can't control, but when you enter into God, who is at that song, the second song that we sang, I will trust the Lord, the Lord my rock. Something that is a rock is unmovable. It is strong. It can stay there in the midst of a storm. Okay? That's what God is. Why? Because God himself is larger than life. Why? Because he created life. So of course he's larger than life. God created it. He's bigger than it. He can handle any storm. Anyone ever hear about a thing called the eye of the storm? In a cyclone or a tornado or a hurricane, there's literally an eye of the storm. There's a place within the dead center middle of a storm, like a tornado, for example, where everything around it is going crazy, but right in the dead center middle of it, what do you have? Calmness. Now that happens, there's a calm before the storm too, but during the storm itself, there's also a calm that happens. When you place yourself in the entrustment of a God that's larger than life, in your heart, you will have a certain calmness that you will not be able to explain. And you can sit there and try to explain to people, but then you just end up putting your hands up in the air and saying, it's just a piece that passes all understanding, okay? You are not supposed to be able to explain everything. I can't explain how if I had a wife, I would draw strength from her. How much more can I not explain how much I could draw strength from God? But I do, and I know it works, because it's happened in my life on a personal level. And any Christian who's ever walked long enough in the Christian life knows exactly what I'm talking about. You could be going through hell and back, and you still have the eye of the storm in your heart. But here's the thing. Verse 7 of the verse that we're, verses we're talking about. It says, they, that is those who are blessed, go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. If we go from strength to strength, that means what? There's continual strengths. There's continual rocks. There's continual parts where God shows up and shows that he can conquer what's in our life. Which means there's also on our part continual weaknesses. Continual eyes of the storm. We move in season from strength to strength. We move in season from this day to the next. Paul puts it this way. He says, though we are out, we are wasting away day by day outwardly, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Inwardly, there is right in the middle of a hectic life of tons of stuff going around us, there is the eye of the storm, but it keeps happening. It keeps happening. You want to know why it keeps happening? Because verse 6 makes it quite clear. In verse 6, it says, As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs, and the autumn rains also cover it with pools. Now, most of us aren't going to know what the place of Baca is, but I'll let you know. You do a little study. The valley of Baca is literally, literally translated means the valley of tears. The valley of weepers. This life is filled with blood, sweat, and tears, and we know that it's filled with chaotic storms. But we have an innkeeper. We have that place that we can go to in our heart that will be the eye in the midst of the storm. What happened during the time of Noah when there were storms everywhere and everyone else was being destroyed for their wickedness and that was what was happening. But in the time of Noah, when that happened, there was this one place on, uh, in the earth where you have an ark and inside the ark you had teeming life. In the eye of the storm, which is the ark during Noah's day, you had teeming life. But after the storm was done... Noah still had to face life afterwards. Even after that gigantic storm, he still had to face whether or not he was going to choose to live in drunkenness. And he did get drunk after that happened. And the text makes it quite clear. But the point that I'm making is we move 
from rock to rock, from strength to strength. Life will keep going. The storm will keep happening. The October storm is the last storm we will see in Buffalo. Because we live in that part of the country where storms happen when it comes to snow. But it's the same way with life. On the outside, we will keep wasting away day by day. But if we enter into that place of worship in our heart, we will be renewed day by day, inwardly, every day. And on that note, if Pastor Don will come up and pray. What an appropriate message from your word, O oh Lord, in the times that we live in, even again today. People taking weapons and killing, the last I heard, was 13 others. The chaos, not only in our own country, but in many countries around the world. But thank you that we have the peace that passes understanding. The whole world falls apart. Indeed, even if our own lives are threatened, we have the confidence and assurance of eternal life with you. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name.